Good afternoon, church. How are you guys doing today? Wow, three of you are doing well. No, how are you guys doing today? That's amazing. What an amazing time in the presence of the Lord. When we can enter with worship into the throne room of heaven. Now, some of you guys might be here and you might have thought, wow, we just sang for 10 minutes just Yeshua, right? And you thought maybe that was a little bit strange, just one word on repeat again and again and again. And yet, I want to tell you that there is a power in focus, okay? How many of you guys know that your mind can run a thousand different directions, right, every single day? And so when there's an opportunity to focus your mind, focus it on the right thing, focus it on Jesus, right? Be intentional with your thoughts. You can, you can think a thousand things, but you can only say one thing at a time. And it might as well be the name of Jesus, amen? And so I encourage you, whenever there's opportunities of worship where, wow, we're singing the same, the same words, the same phrase again and again, let that draw you. Let that narrow your mind and narrow your focus and allow you to enter into a place of worship with him. Well, New Life, uh, I'm excited to be with you today. If you're joining us uh, online, we have a, a special treat for you. We're beginning a brand new series uh, here for the rest of October, and the series is called Intentional. Say that back to me, Intentional. Intentional, our response to a generous God. How many of you guys know that God is good? Have you experienced that in your life? Yeah? You can shout praise to him if he's good. If he's done something in your life that is worthy of praise, God is good. Amen? God is a generous God. God is a, a God who gives. He's abundant in his giving. And so uh, we're going to talk about this concept of being intentional as a response uh, to what God is doing in our lives. I want to uh, just sh uh, share one verse with you. You guys uh, have heard this verse before. It comes from Psalm 118. You can see it there on the screen. It says, this is the day the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. Have you heard that verse? Maybe you've sang it. This is the day, this is the day that the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. See, we know this verse, right? But here's the principle. This verse has got two parts to it. Who made the day? The Who's going to rejoice? Amazing. Yeah, wow. And look at this, look at this uh, key phrase there, we will rejoice. What does that tell us? There, there's a choice. There's a choice, will. That's a choice that I'm making. And so uh, in the context of this series, Intentional, how we respond to a generous God, I want us to see that there is this partnership that God uh, has for us uh, between himself and us, okay? There's something that God is doing on this earth, and then there's something that we are doing in response to what God is doing. Are you with me? Okay, so the Lord made the day. We will rejoice. Tell your neighbor, joy is your responsibility. It's the truth. Joy is your responsibility. You see, God has created the day given us everything we need for joy, and now we can choose it. Amen? Amen, amen, amen. So uh, speaking of being intentional uh, with what we're doing uh, and, and, and taking what God has given us and, and using it in an intentional way, how many of you guys were here yesterday for Fall Festival? Yeah, wasn't it an amazing time? I mean, we had probably thousands of people come through this campus, uh, and, and uh, just what an amazing opportunity to gather together with the community, uh, with Friendship Christian School, with the Forsyth County Sheriff's Office, and, and just shine uh, a beacon of light from right here at the corner of Mathis Airport and Old Atlanta Road. What an amazing opportunity. And I want to say that each and every one of you who dedicated yesterday to serve on the Dream Team. Are you here, Dream Teamers? Yeah? I saw a lot of people wearing T-shirts yesterday, yeah? Yeah, I even got one. That's cool. Uh, but I want to say thank you because what you are doing matters. It's very, very important. A day like yesterday is an opportunity to be 
intentional as a church community, as a family, with what God has blessed us in this house and to reach the community around us. And so I just want to say thank you. Thank you. I'm looking forward to more events like that. If, if you weren't able to join us uh, yesterday, you can catch the highlights on our social media channels, and you can follow there as well to see all the cool, exciting things that are coming up in the life of new life, okay? All right. So uh, intentional, our response to a generous God. Uh, oh, oh, I, I want to lay this foundation today and then get into just one application of being intentional, okay? And then over the next few weeks, we're going to talk about being intentional in different areas of our life. Because here's the thing. Uh, being intentional requires some kind of effort. It, it means that we have to uh, make an effort to, to do it, right? Like, otherwise, life just passes us by. Anybody... Um, been in maybe middle school, high school, and you had like long summers, and you're just wondering, man, when is the summer going to be over, and school's going to start? Nobody, yeah. It just, it just flies by, right? Like, life just happens so quick, and if we're not intentional, uh, it just disappears in front of us. Um, I, I want to read uh, a verse from Genesis, uh, a couple of verses from Genesis, because it lays the foundation of God's plan for us, for mankind, and for you and me individually. In Genesis chapter 1, if you've got your Bibles, you can turn with me. Uh, verse 27. I think there's a song with this one too. Uh, uh, I'm not going to sing that one, uh, but I've heard it. Uh, God created man in his own image. In the image of God, he created him male and female. It says he created them. And then it says God blessed them and God said to them, be what? Fruitful, yeah, y'all can talk back to me. And what? And? And multiply. Be fruitful and multiply is this command uh, from God. He says, fill the earth, subdue it, have dominion over the fish of the sea, birds of the air, and over every living thing that moves on the earth. You see, God created man, and, and he created them with a purpose. How many of you guys know that you have a purpose? You have, you, there is a plan of God for your life. There is something that God wants you to be doing to accomplish. There are people that God wants you to be reaching. There are relationships that God wants you to be cultivating. God has a purpose and plan for your life. If you believe that, say amen. Amen, amen. 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 From the very beginning, we see that God created mankind to have, to have influence, right? To do something with what they've been given. Uh, and, and really, that's God's um, nature, is to, is to partner with mankind. If you look throughout the history of time, that's what God does. He partners with people to manifest his name, who he is on this earth, right? Like we see that from the very beginning. We see that when God calls Abraham and, and God says, I'm going to bless you so that you'll be a blessing to the, to the entire earth, right? And, and through you, through your family, uh, people will know that there is God. God, God did that through the nation of Israel, right, where he says that you will be a people unto me, and you will be like this beacon for all the other nations to say that there is a God in Israel. God did it, does it with his church, right? Uh, Jesus comes, and, and he, says, uh, that, he says that I will give you power, right, from on high. He says you will be my witnesses. He says you are the light of the earth. There is a mission on this earth for us as followers of Jesus, to demonstrate the likeness, the person of God on this earth. Amen? That is our global plan. And so that, that is God's global plan for our life. That is our purpose in Christ. In uh, Genesis chapter 2, when we're talking about the creation story, it, it talks about how God uh, planted a garden named Eden, right? And, and then he places mankind in it, it says. And, and it says that out of the ground... The Lord God made every tree, say every tree, every tree. Like he put in the garden everything, right? It didn't say like some trees. It didn't say like the best trees. Everything is available to Adam and Eve in the garden. And, and it, then it says that the Lord God took the man, put him in the garden of Eden where there was everything available. And then he says, tend and keep it. Okay? And, and throughout this series, I want us to see this parallel, that God gives us certain things, not for us, 
not for consumption, not for our use, but to tend, to keep, to grow, to multiply, okay? Uh, Be fruitful and multiply is what we read there in Genesis chapter 1. And so over these next four weeks, I want to really talk with you guys about four different areas in our life where we can be intentional as a response to a generous God, okay? Today we're going to touch on uh, our our thoughts, right? Our minds, uh, the way that we think. Next week we'll talk about being intentional with our time, right? Time is a resource that God has given us. Then we'll talk about uh, being intentional with our talents. Each of us has giftings, abilities that, that God has gifted us with. How do we be intentional with those? Put those to use the way that God desires. And then at the, we'll close the series out, how to be intentional with our treasure. Make sure you guys don't miss the la- that last week. We're going to be talking about money, okay? It's okay to talk about money in church. Jesus talked about money all the time. So definitely come for that one. So being intentional, being intentional. You know, the Bible word for the topic that we're talking about is stewardship. And you might have heard a lot of messages on stewardship, being a good steward, how to take what you have, what God has given to you under your authority or dominion or control, and how to use it most effectively, right? How to grow it, how to multiply it. There's a lot of Uh, wisdom, let's say, in this world on this topic, right? You can go to any kind of business conference. They're going to be talking about how to grow your business, how to get more sales. There's a lot of resources in this world that will try to teach you how to be more effective with your time, uh, how to grow your business, whatever area it may be, right? How to have better relationships, whatever it is. But I want to tell you that, that there is a resource, okay? There is the Word of God, the written word of God, there is the living, breathing word of God in the person of Jesus Christ, who the Bible says is the wisdom of God, right, for us. And so there is a resource for us to learn uh, these things, not for our benefit, but because uh, of the outcome. Like God has an expectation for us to be fruitful. It says that um, God will... uh, uh, take, uh, we will give an account before God, right, uh, in, in the last day. And so we have to take this seriously as believers, as followers of Jesus, and make sure that we are managing God's resources appropriately. How many of you guys are married? Show of hands. Okay, about half, I'd say, yeah. Um, those of you guys who are married, um, have you ever um, just been like, uh, maybe maybe you're with your spouse on a long road trip. Um, maybe it's just at home and, um, you know, it's the busyness of life. Uh, kids are running around. And, and you notice after some time that there hasn't really been, like, meaningful dialogue, right? Like, maybe you're driving the car, listening to music, and you're like, wow, like, an hour went by. Like, we're not really talking. Or, or at home, days go by. Kids are going to school, coming back. You're like, wow, we haven't had, like, a conversation. Anybody? Yeah? Does that happen to you? Just me? That's cool. Yeah, that happens, right? It happens. The time goes by, and, and, and uh, it's funny. It's, um, let's see if this will resonate. Do you ever, have you ever looked at your spouse or had your spouse look at you and ask you this question? What are you thinking? What are you thinking right now? Like, what's on your mind? Uh, has that ever happened? You guys ever done that? It's usually like a way like, man, like, wait, it's been really quiet late. Like, what are you thinking about? And, and, and usually the person who's answering is like, nothing. <laughs> yeah, right? And, and, then it, and then the conversation goes like this. Uh, uh, what do you mean nothing? You can't be thinking about nothing. Like, you have to be thinking about something. You guys have this conversation in your house? Yeah, yeah. And, and so um, anyway, I, I share this because uh, that's a really important question. What are you thinking Right? Like, what is in your thoughts? What goes on here? Nobody else can see. It's just you, right? And it might be when when you're alone. uh, It might be when you're with people. But what is going on in your thoughts? Here's the thing. Other people can help you manage other things, right? Like, you can hire an assistant to help you with your calendar, to manage your time. You can hire a financial guru to help manage your finances. You cannot hire anyone 
to manage what's happening up here. You with me? This is like your responsibility. This is like a key thing to manage what I am thinking, what God has given to me. I uh, read this phrase, I think it's a slogan in the educational system, and it goes like this, a mind is a terrible thing to waste. You guys ever heard that? A mind is a terrible thing to waste. I would agree with that, yeah. God has given us a mind as a resource, ability to think, ability to, to have thoughts, and then he expects us to manage that, to steward it well. Here's the other thing, the other reason that it's really important that we talk about managing our thoughts. You see, our thoughts are the battlefield of our soul. Like, everything that happens in our life, in our, like, in our soul level, I'm talking about um, mind, will, emotions, the way that we, our character develops, all comes through our mind. Do you guys ever think about that? Like, the way that we develop as human beings, the way that our, our uh, relationship with God develops, our relationship with other people, it happens through the mind. And so, um, the Bible talks about how we're in a spiritual warfare, we're, we're, um, we're not here just, just kind of living for ourselves. We're here on a mission. We have a real enemy, right, that, that opposes um, the things of God. And there is a battle going on. And I want to tell you that your mind is the front line of the battle. Do you know that? I know there's a real battle, real war going on, a physical war in Ukraine, and you can think about those cities that are the front line, right? And, and, and uh, your mind, just imagine, is the front line of that battleground. And, and the missiles that are coming across and landing right there in, in the front line, they're not, they're not explosives that are blowing up buildings, but they're just as dangerous. Their thoughts they're things that come through our minds that sometimes we've gotten so used to them because we've been living in a war zone for such a long time that we ignore the, the air raid sirens, right? Like we don't even hear that anymore. Those thoughts, they just come and we just, you know, like we, we just live with them. And so what I want us to do today is to really take a step back and think about, think about what it means to manage my own thought life to be a steward of my own mind, right? And, and so the verse that I want to take us to, it comes from 2 Corinthians. Uh, if, you, if you come, if you've got your Bible, 2 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 4. It says, for the weapons of our warfare, again, we're in a spiritual battle, the Bible tells us this, and it says the weapons of our warfare are not carnal. That means they're not fleshly. They're not physical. They're not of this world, okay? That you might say, well, uh, what good is a weapon if it's like not real? I can't touch it. I can't blow anything up with it. They're not carnal. It says, but they are what? Mighty, okay? So we've got weapons in our arsenal that are mighty. And so now let's talk about what those are. It says they're mighty in God for pulling down strongholds. A few weeks ago, um, maybe a month ago, two months ago, Diana and I uh, took, took a trip to France, and uh, we got to visit some really cool places, and there was this one really interesting place that was, um, it's, it's a castle, and it's built like at the end of a peninsula, almost like in the water, okay? Uh, I want to show you a picture, actually. It looks like this. It's called Mont Saint-Michel. Um, it's a stronghold, right? What is a stronghold? It's a fortress. It's a, it's a place that is difficult to come against, to attack. Uh, it's surrounded by water. It's surrounded by walls, right? There, there's a stronghold here. Uh, this is in northern France on the English Channel. But I want to tell you that this stronghold, Mont Saint-Michel, it didn't just rise up out of the English Channel, right? Like it didn't just kind of show up one day. And, and just appear there. How did it get there? How did it get there? Somebody had to build it, right? Somebody had to, had to go brick by brick, stone by stone, cart this in to this end of this peninsula, 
and, and start building this fortress, this stronghold, right? And, and, and what's the purpose of a, of a stronghold? It's, to, it's, it's, it's so that there's some kind of troops that can kind of garrison there. They can be protected there. And then if your enemy's got a stronghold, that means that, that it's an area of strength that they can attack you from, right? It's an area of strength that, that uh, opposes you. And so when, when Apostle Paul is writing to the Corinthians and he says that we have weapons that can pull down strongholds, he, he says the rest of the verse, um, our weapons are mighty in God for pulling down strongholds, casting down arguments and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God. And then it's, he says, bringing every thought into captivity to the obedience of Christ. And so there's this parallel that's drawn between strongholds, an area like a fortress, and, and our thoughts uh, being brought into captivity. And so uh, I want us to connect this in a practical, tangible way, that each and every second, uh, there is somebody trying to build a stronghold in your battlefield, okay? And, and it doesn't happen right away. It doesn't just show up in the battlefield of your mind, but it happens brick by brick, stone by stone. Um, David, could, could you hand me one of those bricks right there? Yeah, I got a brick. Just want to kind of demonstrate this. This is a brick, okay? A brick does not a stronghold make, right? This is not a stronghold. This is a brick. So, so let's just picture this brick as just a thought that came into my life, right? It just, just came into my life. It came, it came across my mind. And this thought could be, could be anything, right? But let's say this thought goes something like this. Uh, I don't know if God really loves me, right? I'm not sure if God really loves me, right? And, and, and that thought comes through. It seems kind of simple, like, okay, like, I don't know. Like, it's just a little doubt. It's, it's a brick. And, and um, I'm going to take it and I just kind of set it down, you know, um, right here. And... and uh, let it kind of just sit in my mind, that little tiny innocuous thought. But then, because I let that thought sit, it attracts other thoughts, right? Suddenly, suddenly, somebody, the enemy, says, wow, I got a brick here. I can build from that. Okay, here comes another thought. Maybe this thought goes something like this. Um, you know, that was, uh, I'm not sure if God loves me. Man, if God really loved me, if God really loved me, then, then my child wouldn't, wouldn't be sick, right? My loved one wouldn't have cancer. If God really loved me, I'm not sure if God loves me because of what I'm experiencing in my life. Man, I let that sit, okay? And then suddenly, you know, something happens in my life. I lose my job. Uh, some, something comes against me. And another thought, man, wow, life is hard. Like, I don't know if God hears me. Right, like things are coming against me. Uh, here's another thought, and man, like I don't know. Uh, and 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 suddenly, suddenly I have these thoughts that are being rooted in my mind. Yeah, let's keep them going. Our thoughts come fast, right? Um, maybe something else happens in our life. Uh, the person that we trusted the most, right? Uh, maybe even our own spouse betrays us, right? And and there's a thought of like bitterness, or like man, like how could she? How could he? Uh, and, and that bitterness kind of just settles in our hearts. And, and I, I'm not sure if I can forgive that person or, or see them the same way. And, and there's another thought. And then, and then maybe, man, like, I don't know. I've been dealing with this thing for a long time, uh, this habit. I can't break it. I'm not, sure, I'm not sure if I'll ever get free, right? This habit is, is, is too hard for me. And then, and then another thought, um, wow, like this is... I think, I think I've got an addiction. I think this thing has got a hold on me. Um, I'll never be free from this, right? These are thoughts. These are thoughts that are coming into our mind, and, and we're letting them kind of sit, and, 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 and they're establishing, establishing here a stronghold, a fortress in our own mind, right? And, and suddenly the enemy camps behind this fortress. He... he sits in this stronghold, and he begins to look for opportune times to strike, to attack, to come in. Apostle Paul says that we have 
we have, you and I have mighty weapons for pulling down these strongholds. The mighty weapons are the weapons of truth. It's, it's his word, right? And so, so when those thoughts come, right? When those thoughts come that says, man, I don't know if God loves me, that thought's coming. And, and it comes into the battlefield of my mind. I can say, whoa, whoa, hold on, hold on, hold on. What's that doing here? I know God loves me. He gave his son for me, right? He, he paid the ultimate price for me. God, I know that you love me. That's, that doesn't belong here, right? That doesn't belong in my life. Oh, man, but I've got this stronghold, this, this, this mindset that has developed because I've been accepting a lot of thoughts that are lies, okay? How do I dismantle the mindset, right? I begin to, to take the lies and replace them with truth, right? Oh, um, I, I don't know if I'll... Um, ever get free. Well, I will get free because um, the Bible says that where the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty, right? It says that, that Christ has set me free. He has paid the price. That doesn't belong, right? And, and with truth, we begin to attack the very base of this fortress. We begin to say, um, yeah, that person hurt me, but, but guess what? That doesn't mark me. God's still on the throne. I'm still a son or daughter, right? Like that, that bitterness that tried to take root in me doesn't belong. I can love that person the way Christ loved me. I can display the love of God through every circumstance and injustice because I am called to live like Jesus. Uh, man, yeah, I know I'm going through some rough time. Uh, maybe I lost my job, but God, I trust that this will be an opportunity to stand in faith. Lord, you are my provider. You are Jehovah Jireh. You are the one who's going to come through, right? That thought's gone. It's dismantled. Uh, man, um, I, I've got a sick child, but Lord, by your stripes, your word says we are healed. And so I stand right now and I, I intercede for my child. And I know that even though I don't see it with my own eyes, God, I thank you for the healing that is already coming, right? I thank you for the restoration that is coming. And you start to dismantle, dismantle those lies, right? And, and pretty soon, pretty soon, when the lies are coming through, the lies are coming through, you're immediately, the air raid siren goes on. You're like, man, that is an attack. Like, that's not my thought. That thought is, is coming to kill a steal or destroy, right? That's not for, of God. And immediately, immediately, instead of giving it a place, I toss it out of my mind. Whew. Right? I mean, yeah. God's word is so clear, right? And, and when, it, when we, the light comes on and the strategy of the devil is exposed, right? He's not able to get that foothold because we see things for what they really are. We see those thoughts not as harmless thoughts that are just floating by, not as something I can sit and think about and, 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 and hold on to and see if it's true. But immediately, right, the alarm bells go, and they're like, wow, Jesus would not think this thought, right? It doesn't belong in my mind, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to surrender my mind again to Jesus in this place, right? That thought has no place to land because I've surrendered it because I've, I've cast it down with truth. The weapons of our warfare are mighty. You see, here's how you know when a thought is coming and, and it's coming from the enemy. It's coming to steal, kill, or destroy. It says that any thought, any argument, any high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God, we have to take and put it into obedience, right? Take every thought captive into obedience with Christ. That means, that means there is a way of thinking, there is a mindset, there is a mind of Christ, there is truth that when a thought comes and it doesn't align with the heart of God, we know that, that it's something that's got to be captive, taken captive, bound up, thrown out, okay? And so uh, what does this look like? Um, you know, a lot of times when we, when we try to um, do, do just that, begin to take a thought and say, wow, this isn't from God. Um, I want to I wanna speak truth against it. We'll hear a voice in our own mind say, 
yeah, well, I know that's generally true, but like, for example, somebody hurt me. Yeah, I know I'm supposed to forgive, but like, it really hurt, right? Like, they really betrayed me. And what we do is we take, we take the truth, and then we take our own feelings, experience, and we elevate it above. This is what it means to put an argument above the knowledge of God, above obedience to Christ. We, we allow pride, that's really what it is, our, our selfishness to take what we experience, what we're living through, and say, it matters more than the truth of God's word. And so we just need to be careful that, that when we have this um, uh, kind of resistance, let's say, to taking a thought captive, uh, it may be that there's a stronghold that is beginning to elevate itself above above the knowledge of God, trying to, trying to go higher and say, okay, this is what I want you to see first, is this mindset. The Bible tells us that the mind of Christ is a mind of humility. It's a mind of obedience. It's, it's a mind of submission to the Father. And so when we have the mind of Christ, we are ready to say, yes, God, to whatever you say. We submit ourselves to him. We submit ourselves to him. I'm going to be uh, wrapping up here in a minute. Um, I do want to share a couple more verses with you guys. But I really want us to just take this example with the bricks and really um, find where it applies in my own life, in your own life. Identify a way of thinking that doesn't line up with the word of God. How do you do that? You simply ask God to reveal it to you. We have a loving Father who is ready to father us. If we say, Lord, Holy Spirit, would you just come even right now and just show, expose to me. Search my heart, like David says, and see if there is any twisted, slanted way in me. Maybe there's a mindset that I have, a way that I see somebody uh, a way that I maybe even see the church, see my workplace, see my own family that's got a slant to it. It's got a, it's got a, it's got a bend to it. It doesn't line up with the truth of the word of God. I want to invite you to stand. We're going to have a time to, to respond what does that look like? That just means saying, Lord, I hear what you're saying into my life through your word. I thank you that you're exposing mindsets and thoughts that are unhealthy, not just that are unhealthy, but that are dangerous for my life. I thank you that you're giving me the privilege to steward, to manage my thought life. And I pray for the strength to do that. What's amazing about our minds is, is as we focus our minds on the right things, the wrong things just fade away. Like the more that we replace the lies with truth, the less the lies stick. It's the way that our minds work, that, that as, as, we, as we saturate ourselves with a way of thinking, it creates like new neural pathways even, new ways of thinking. God has given us the ability to change our mindsets, to be molded into his image and likeness. And so if you're here today and you said, yeah, there are, there are things There are thoughts that I've allowed to fly through my mind. There are places where I've allowed myself to go and to, to indulge, to, to think in my own mind, right? And I have this excuse, I'm not hurting anyone or, or oh, I've done that before, I can do it again. What's one, more, what's one more thought, right? And meanwhile, strongholds are being built. 
Maybe it's a little unforgiveness there, a little resentment there, and now I don't see the person the same way anymore. And now every time that they do something, I see it through this bend, through this twist, and I lose the value of who they are in Christ. Maybe it's resentment against God. Maybe things haven't lined up well in life and you're saying, God, where are you? Whatever it may be, I want us to go to him in prayer right now and just release that even now. Even now, let's close our eyes. Let's turn our gaze to heaven, to Yeshua to a loving Father. And just in your own words, begin to begin to release whatever lies, whatever thoughts, whatever obstacles were there in your mind. Recommit to Him your mind back. Lord, we thank you for a brand new mind. We thank you for new mindsets, new thoughts. We thank you that your word says to Think upon things that are praiseworthy and excellent and lovely and pure. And we thank you, Lord, for the gift of our minds. And we we say we will steward that well. We will steward that well. If you're here today and you just feel like it would be helpful if someone would pray with you as you're making this commitment. We have ministers, prayer team who are here. They're ready to pray with you. We're going to sing a worship song, but it's going to be a a time of prayer. We're going to be singing to Jesus, allowing him to minister to us. And if you're here and you're saying, wow, like I, if somebody would pray for me, just pray with me, just stand with me. There's going to be a time right now as we sing for you to do that. We're going to begin to sing now. I want to tell you that just like we are called to have singular thoughts, thoughts of Him, I want to tell you that His thoughts are for you. And maybe you're here today and you've never made the decision to follow Jesus, to say yes to His call. Maybe you've been going to church for a while, but you've never made it personal. Jesus tells this parable. He says that, The kingdom of heaven is like treasure that is hidden in a field. And like a man who who finds this treasure and then he goes and sells everything that he has so he can buy this field. I wanna tell you that God, eternal God, found treasure on this earth. He found you, he found you. He said, you're worth it. And he paid the highest price. Jesus says the kingdom of heaven is like like a merchant who who seeks out a, a pearl of great price and pays everything in order to obtain it. I wanna say that God has paid the greatest price for you. This world will try to tell you that you don't have value, that you don't measure up, but God has already measured your value. He said it was worth his own blood, the blood of his son, to redeem you and reconcile you. And so as we're singing, as as you're coming up for prayer, if your decision today is to say yes to the invitation of heaven, to say, God, yes, yes, I I say yes, that, that I am the treasure that you are seeking. Maybe I don't understand it fully, But because you're calling and drawing me, I say yes to you. I want to invite you also during this song to come. And we want to pray with you. We want to celebrate with you as you make a decision. 